how we doing, everybody? Welcome to a Whiskey Wednesday night. How are you doing? This is the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. I am Jason C. want to uh, thank everyone for coming by again. Love doing these on my Wednesday nights with you guys. Always a lot of fun. We have an action-packed show tonight. <laughs> Not action-packed, but it's going to be a really fun show. I have some really cool giveaways. Um, we're going to be tasting some Glen Goyne tonight. Um, Glen Goyne 12 which is a scotch I haven't, gotten able, uh, haven't been able to get to and try, which I've been wanting to try to get to. Um, but I got this really cool gift set, and um, the gift set had uh, 12, which I already had a bottle of, but it also had the 15-year and an 18-year. So I, I could not be more excited to try them. So um, we're going to be diving into those t uh, tonight. Also tonight, guys, I'm going to be revealing my top five scotches that I tried this year. Uh, just me personally. Um, I didn't want to make a video for this just because I thought with uh, me just getting into scotch, um, I know, I just kind of thought it'd be fun to do with you guys, with the viewers, because a lot of you guys are out there kind of helped me or, uh, you know, kind of guided me to, you know, try these different scotches. So, you know, it's really something I really wanted to do. So I'm uh, looking forward to doing that. And we have some really cool giveaways uh, later, which I'll uh, get into as well. But before we get started, let's see what's going on in the chat. Uh, just going to kind of run through and say hi to everybody here. Um, all right, here we go. Whiskey Padawan, Steve A., Nicholas Villaggio, William Davilar, Mose Chun, Jim Shannon, Santa Cruzin, Jared Oz. What's up, guys? Kenneth Kennedy's in the house, Moe's Chun, the Dan Trout, Dan the Man, how you doing buddy, Mike Snook's in the house, uh, Brian Brennicky, Chad Holly, Scotty from my bourbon journey, how you doing man, Brandon Weiss, how, how are you, Eric Gilbert, uh, let's see, Chad Holly, Juan Quintanilla, Sipper Social Club, that's Jeremy everybody, say hi to Jeremy, go check out his channel if you haven't yet, go check out Scott at my bourbon journey, um, amazing channels, I always call them out, Moose76, um, Whiskey Throttle, hey, um, oh, uh, going to miss this wonderful journey to Scotch, but I have to be at a whiskey tasting in a half hour, sorry, hey, it's okay, that's Daniel from Whiskey Throttle, thanks for uh, checking in, Daniel, always appreciate it when you come in, thanks for coming up, coming by, the Whiskey Friend is in the house, how you doing, man, cap and make it happen, how are you, buddy, thanks for dropping in anyway, I uh, really appreciate it, Rabbit and Red's in the house, uh, let's see, super social, oh, Jeremy's cracking the new Octomore 9.1 and 9.3. We're going to talk a little bit about Octomore, Jeremy, um, definitely. Um, Santa Cruz and Jason, best show on Wednesday for sure. Oh, I appreciate that, man. That's really nice for you to say. Um, whiskey friend, Glen going teapot dram, what else? Oh, I want to try that so bad. <laughs> um, let's see, who else we got here? Jason Fisk, Fisky's in the house. Uh, Snook, Andrew Spurl, how you doing? Carl H., a lot of people coming in here. All right. Glad to see everybody. So um, before we get started, guys, I think uh, for the first time uh, tonight, my first dram, I think I'm going to uh, pour a little Glen Going 12. Let's get right into it. I mean, uh, I had one little dram of this, uh, but I know with scotch, you kind of want to sip it down a little bit, trying to get the full experience. Uh, so I'm going to pour a little Glen Going with you all. Can't wait. There's a lovely pour. Um, so a little bit about Glen Goyne, guys, and you know, forgive me, you know, the whiskey nerd in me. I like to kind of really do my research and and uh, go through each uh, go through each distillery as much as I can. So uh, Glen Goyne Distillery is located at the junction point in between the Lowlands and the Highlands, but it's really considered a Highland uh, Scotch whiskey. Um, they pride itself on having the slowest distillation process in Scotland with six years of seasoned air drying their own casks uh, before they put the, uh, the whiskey in it. Um, they air dry their own barley. They don't use any peat, so it's, it's non-peated scotch. Uh, the name Glen Goyne translates to wild geese, referring to the distillery's surroundings. And um, all their whiskeys are non-chill filtered and natural color, which I love. So uh, let's check the chat here real quick. Uh, we've got 37 in the chat right now. Awesome. Great to see you guys. Um, definitely have the Glen Going 12 ready to be my next port too. Oh, awesome, Steve, eh? All right, so I'm going to get, um, since I haven't really had a lot of experience with Glen Going 12, I want to get into the nose here a little bit with you guys, so hope you don't mind. I love smelling uh, the scotches. The, the different noses on these are amazing. 
And if you guys have had a lot of experience with Glenn Goyne, you know, let me know in the chat. Let me know what you find in Glenn Goyne, especially 12, 15, even when we get to the 18. Actually, you know what? Before we sip this, I'm going to pour the 15 and the 18 so they open up a little bit. Um, wow, well, if I can get it open, it's kind of slippery. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, there it goes. All right. All right, so before we try the 12, I'm going to open the 15 here. I'm going to pour that one. I'm just going to pour the whole damn bottle in there. Let that open up. And we're going to go into the 18. Uh, who else is coming in here? Uh, oh, Moose76, Fight for Sounds in the house. How you doing? Uh, Texas Owl, I don't know about this becoming a Scotch channel. <laughs> uh, yeah, Texas Owl, I've, uh, I've been uh, dabbling into Scotch in September. Really enjoying different Scotches as well. It's uh, part of the journey through the channel, and I've been doing uh, bourbon reviews uh, on the lives, I think, pretty much since I started. So I figured tonight would be a fun one to do a scotch for once, or three different ones, uh, especially because I've, I've never tried these. So, And I think an 18-year-old is probably one of the oldest scotches I've actually tried so far, uh, so I really look forward to getting into it. All right, so the 12... So this has that amazing burnt toast and marmalade nose that I get on a lot of good scotches. Uh, this is also age and ex-bourbon and ex-sherry casks. 43% ABV. This smells like a, uh, a um, what do you call it, a, uh, a Heath bar. It's like uh, toffee and, um, and dark chocolate I get on the nose here. Uh, if you guys uh, have a question and I miss it, uh, let Dan Trout know. Dan the man, he's, uh, he's, he's one of my admins in there. He's one of my uh, moderators. So if you have a question that I'm missing, throw it to Dan and he'll uh, get it back to me and I'll be able to see it. Really a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, citrus on here. I tend to get more of the, uh, probably because I'm a bourbon drinker, I tend to get more of the ex-bourbon notes in uh or well, the ex bourbon casks notes uh, from uh, from uh, from Scotch more than uh, more than the sherry I think. On some scotches, the sherry really does come through, but when it's really light like this, I really kind of get those bourbon notes first. Hey, what's up, Rob's in the house? What's up, Whiskey in the Six? How you doing, man? Rob just got back from his kickboxing class, I think. <laughs> All right, guys. Cheers. I am going in for the first round of the night. Happy Whiskey Wednesday. Thanks for coming, everybody. Cheers. Mmm. Oh. Definitely sweet. A lot of citrus and lemon there on the palate, too. Really good. That dark chocolate note is is it's coming through very slightly. But yeah, you're getting a lot of that vanilla. Definitely some more of that, you know, and I feel like citrus is is a big note that I'm getting in a lot of the the younger scotches as well. Mm. Maybe a little bit of uh, apple there on the finish. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm. Mm, I'm getting like a juicy red apple. That's really good. That's really good. Wow, for a 12 year old, it's really good proof. I definitely feel it a little bit. Good mouth coating on that one. That's nice. Mm. Whiskey in the six. It's like cheers in here. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows. Everyone knows everybody's name. Uh, all right, guys. So before we get into our next scotch. Um, I want to go over my giveaways for tonight, so this is going to be really cool. Uh, I found these in my local store, and I was really excited to give these away to a couple of uh, viewers that are going to be watching tonight. Um, so these are, I'm not playing guess the bottle, these are just going to be some quick trivia questions that I'm going to do, we're going to do them a little later, but I definitely wanted to, it's not going to be, well, it's going to be kind of like samples, so I'm going to show you guys what we're giving away tonight. I have two of these I'm going to be giving away. And I picked these up for you guys to, to give away since it's, you know, the holidays are coming up. A little bit of a gift. So uh, two people will be receiving this awesome gift set from uh, Redbreast, uh, which is my favorite Irish whiskey. It's got the 12-year in here, the 15-year, and the Lustau edition. So uh, I have two of these, two of these that I got. Uh, so I'm going to be giving these away tonight. 
And uh, so two lucky, two lucky viewers will be able to enjoy some amazing Irish whiskey if you've never had it. So uh, that's going to be for you guys tonight. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. And um, <laughs> it's too sensual to watch. Uh, okay, cool. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do is, is I am going to go into uh, my regular news segment here. Let's uh, go into some whiskey news. So... Um, the first news story up is we have uh, talking about Jim Rutledge, who was the former master distiller at Four Roses before uh, Brent Elliott took over. He, uh, he basically had some plans to retire and be done, but I think he got a little bit bored, and now he is thinking about starting up his own distillery. So uh, here's a nice shot of it. So back in 2015, uh, Four Roses master distiller Jim Rutledge announced that he was retiring after nearly 50 years. Um... Uh, and, you know, largely responsible for the resurgence of the Four Roses brand and its rise to international claim. His retirement left something of a hole in the bourbon industry. So he said it took him about a week to realize that his retirement, consisting of six Saturdays and one Sunday, wasn't going to be his cup of tea. And with that, he decided to get back to it. So since 2015, he's been contract distilling at the Castle and Key Distillery. Uh, and with a combined 160 years of bourbon industry experience, experience uh, him and... Four partners are now close to securing land and closing their first round of funding to build a 69,000 square foot distillery near Louisville, Kentucky. They plan to acquire 140 acres of land and they have their eyes on their property in Oldham County, Kentucky. Uh, they have acquired the rights to Cream of Kentucky Bourbon, which was first introduced in 1888. Uh, at what point, Traeger and Company had gained so much popularity that Norman Rockwell provided artwork for the brand. So, uh, the, this is this is coming. This is going to be a Rutledge distillery. Jim Rutledge. He made some absolutely amazing stuff from uh, uh, for Four Roses. So I think uh, pretty excited for that one. So see what you guys are saying in the chat. Um, nice. Well, all oh, right. You guys are excited about the, uh, the giveaway. Very cool. Texas Owl says, "Holy f, holy fuck." <laughs> Texas Owl. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hope you guys are excited for that. Um, what do we got here? Cream of Kentucky. Exactly, Nicholas Villaggio. Yep. Um, love me some red breast, but he has a couple of those on my shelf. He's going to sit that one out. <laughs> um, let's see. All right, take care, Whiskey Throttle. He's out. All right, so, oh, Numenium's in the house. How you doing, buddy? Nice to see you. So, uh, our next story is uh, actually pretty cool. This is uh, for... You know, a lot of you whiskey nerds like I am. Um, so this is about a pre-prohibition whiskey stash that was found and set for auction. So check out those bottles on the shelf, guys. So in the early 1900s, builder, banker, and spirits merchant Jean-Baptiste Leonis saw prohibition on the horizon and decided to take action to protect his whiskey. He constructed uh, secret vaults in his home in Hancock Park and his weekend property at Little Tujunga Canyon and filled them with his secret stash. The collection remained virtually untouched until the death of his great-grandson in 2017. So today, Christie's Auction House will be auctioning off his collection of over 40 cases of unopened bonded whiskey. The collection includes bottles of Hermitage whiskey that was distilled in 1914 and Old Crow from 1912. Christie is, ex is expecting that the cases will go for somewhere just shy of about 10 grand. Though it's entirely possible, those numbers will be quickly surpassed. Pretty awesome. Um, so I thought that was a really cool story. Let's move on to our next one. This is a new story coming out of Buffalo Trace, guys. So this is a new series from, uh, from Buffalo Trace called Old Charter Oak. So most bourbon is aged in white oak from the Ozarks, but bourbon regulations only require that new charred oak containers be used for aging. The type of oak isn't specified. So the old charter oak series will feature different oak varietals sourced from different regions, different countries, and different ages, uh, including some century oaks. So this bottling features oak sourced from Mongolia by master distiller Harlan Wheatley back in 2006. The oak barrels arrived at Buffalo Trace in 2008 and were filled with Buffalo Trace mash bill number one. Future releases will be rolled out periodically with new releases coming in 2019. So he said, as of now, we have bourbon aging for the old Charter Oak collection set now through 2030, but we'll keep producing more each year for more new whiskeys beyond that. 
Um, aged for 10 years, Old Charter Oak Mongolian Oak is available in December 2018, so this month, in limited quantities at a suggested retail price of $59.99. So actually not bad. In a new limited edition whiskey from Buffalo Trace, no less. Uh, only 60 bucks. New Mongolian, uh, using these, this new Mongolian wood. Uh, but, you know, as most things with Buffalo Trace and the way the bourbon market is, it's probably going to be hard to, you know, get your hands on one of these. But if you do and you get lucky, then more power to you. So let's see. Uh, um, Dan Trout. Uh, b -b wow. Dang. He protected his stash so well that this was never tasted. Whiskey in the Six. You are way too good at lives, brother. Put me to shame. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, Rob. I, I really love your lives, buddy. Um, Mongolian oak. What the F? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pappy is overhyped now. Texas Owl, I agree. Um, Texas Owl, once the Stitzel juice was gone in 2014 and went blah. A lot of people say that, Texas Owl. I, would, I, would, uh, I can't say I had enough um, experience with Pappy, but a lot of people that I know that have had a lot of it definitely say that a lot. Um, Moose 76, 782 sub. Yeah. Yeah, Moose. Uh, the channel's growing pretty fast. It's been four months only, 782 uh, subs in, uh, in, um, in four months. So I'm really excited. Um, one thing that I thought of that I wanted to do, guys, uh, this was another announcement I had. Something that I thought of was the, um, uh, so when the day comes that I hit 1,000 subscribers, and I am, I'm hoping that'll be sometime in the early new year. Uh, what I'm thinking about doing is having, uh, I'm going to have a contest and basically have one of you, the viewers, uh, actually have a chance to uh, share a live with me. So what I would like to do is do, uh, so my, for my thousandth, so when I hit a thousand viewers, I'm going to create a blind flight, uh, probably about five different, probably bourbons, because uh, that's what I know best and that's what I have the most of. I have five bourbons, and I'm going to send them out to one lucky winner. And that lucky winner, if they're comfortable, will come out uh, or come on live with me on a Wednesday night like this. And uh, sit down, and we'll be able to do the blind flight together, and the world can watch you kind of taste and, and uh, kind of test what I sent you. And I figured that would be uh, really cool uh, to celebrate 1,000 subs. So uh, that's going to be coming up soon, as soon as I hit 1,000 subs. So it would be really cool. Um, Richie Z is drinking some Glen Goyne with me. Hey, thanks, Richie Z. Nice to see you, man. Um, Jason, I just saw that Ohio raffle for Pappy and BTAC was today. Did you try to get a bottle? Tom R., yeah, that's not, uh, there was no, the raffle was just to put your name into the Ohio State raffle. There was no, you don't win yet. <laughs> you basically either go to a liquor store or you go uh, online and you fill out, you put in all your information. You can either be part of uh, the Pappy raffle the or a BTAC raffle or both. Obviously, I picked both, hoping to get one bottle, but it's it's literally the entire state of Ohio. So chances are pretty slim, and they're going to uh, announce winners some point in, um, in January. Uh, early January is when the winners are going to be announced to who gets a bottle. I'm not sure how it works. Apparently, they notify you, and then they let you know what's left as far as who's bought what. And then you get your choice of whatever you want, whether it be a Pappy or a BTAC. So we'll see. Um, yeah, guys, I'm, I'm glad you like the idea with the, uh, the blind flight. I think it would be really cool to have someone on. Um, but I don't want to pressure anyone if they're not comfortable being on camera, if they don't want to be uh, on screen. So really, you know, you guys, if, if you really want to do it, uh, I'll probably have you guys send me uh, emails and I'll probably put you in kind of a randomizer and I'll select one winner. Uh, any of you guys that really want to be on camera, be on the channel, and you know, have a really cool blind flight with uh, with me live, and uh, you know, you and the and the rest of the gang in the chat, it'd be a lot of fun, I think. So, all right, guys. So I just uh, did the twelve. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the Glen Goyne fifteen, uh, which has been sitting here, opening up a little bit. So this is also ex bourbon and ex sherry, um, forty three percent ABV. Uh, let me just make sure I'm not missing any other details here for the 15. Uh, again, natural color. And natural color, yeah, and uh, 43%. All right. Let's go into the nose on the Glen Goyne 15. I've never had this one, so I'm really excited. Uh, here we go. Wow, this one, 
This one smells like a vanilla custard. Really nice on the nose. I'm trying to stick my nose in there a little bit. Definitely getting that um, that burnt toast, almost like a shortbread, uh, shortbready uh, flavor on the nose there. I'm getting a lot more citrus on this, and I'm not talking. So on the twelve, I was getting, um, you know, probably some more lemon. This, this is a really big burst of tropical fruits in here. I almost want to say, you know, maybe orange or maybe some. Pineapple, is that does that sound crazy? Mm. Wow, that's a that's a really good nose on this. Really nice. Mmm. Lots of vanilla, man. This is like vanilla custard with that almost like creme brulee. Like a like a like an orange zested creme brulee. That's what's on the nose. Amazing. Alright, I'm gonna go in for a sip here. Cheers everyone. Let's go in for the Glen Goyne 15. Oh, wow. That's more spicy on the palate than sweet. Oh, wow, the mouthfeel on that is incredible. Yeah, it's almost... If a scotch can be creamy, it's almost creamy. It really just coats the palate. It's I still feel it going down. That's really nice. Mmm. Uh, let's see here. Uh, love the 15. Whiskey friend. Hey, Jason. Oh, how you doing, whiskey friend? Uh, it's amazing. Uh, Richie Z, did you get any coconut in the 12? Let me go back to the 12, buddy. Richie Z, is that on the palate or on the nose? Oh, I could see it on the nose. I'm getting a little coconut. Yeah, I wouldn't have even thought coconut. To me, I was thinking like tropical fruits, but now that you say coconut, it's definitely triggering, uh, definitely triggering, triggering that a little bit. That's really interesting. That's the one thing I'm finding that I really love about scotch is the, um, you know, how it how it evolves in the glass and how it evolves as you drink it and get lower and down the bottle. And that was a big um, that was a big component to me picking my top five that I tried this year. Hmm. Yeah, coconut. I can get that on the nose, man. I don't want to mess up my palate. I'll, I'll take. I'll go back later and take another sip. But I want to try this 15 again. So, cheers. Mmm. You know what I like about this one is like the 12. The 12 was really easy sipper, and it was it was sweet. This one isn't nearly as sweet. I'm getting more like wood spice, and I'm getting some. Almost like a, like a spiced vanilla bean in there. Oh, that is really good. The flavors on that. And my goodness, the way it's sticking to the palate. Man, it's just coating the palate. It's just kind of staying there. Really nice. Mm. Yeah, that little bit of a spice kick is really kind of putting the 15 over the... I'm really enjoying this one. I got to get a bottle of this. This is really good. Mm. I'm not getting that apple flavor that I got on the 12. This is coming through with more of, of a, a vanilla custard spice with some really nice tropical fruit flavors kind of rounding it out. But the mouthfeel is so creamy. It's just sticking with me, sticking to my palate. That's really good. Wow, the 15. Awesome. Um, all right, here we go. Texas Owl. It's nice. Moose 76. <laughs> Hey, Whiskey Ace is in the house. How you doing, buddy? Nice to see you. All right. So what we're going to do now, guys, we're going to have a couple more uh, stories to get to here. Um, let's see here. All right. Just setting this one up here. Um, let's go to this screen right here, guys. So we have two new uh, Gordon and McPhail private collection whiskeys that are hitting, uh, going to be hitting the shelves. So back in 2018, Gordon McPhail announced a streaming uh, streamlining of its entire portfolio. In early November 2018, the brand announced two new private collection editions in the uh, Interleven 1985 private collection 
and the Glenn Roth's 1974 private collection. Now two more our expressions are joining the ranks. So uh, introducing the Kalila 1968 private collection from Gordon McPhail. This is a 50-year-old single malt whiskey matured in a single refill sherry hogshead cask. The barrel only yielded 199 bottles. To date, it is the oldest Kalila single malt ever released, bottled at 52.5% ABV with a price of about, get ready for this, guys, $9,550. Yikes. Uh, the one next to it is the Glen Levitt 1954 Private Collection. Single malt whiskey uh, in cask 1412. It's a refill sherry butt for 64 years. Cask 14112, I'm sorry, 1412, yielded only 222 bottles. It is also bottled at cask strength at 41% ABV with a suggested price of $12,670. <laughs> Yowza. All right, guys, and the last one of the night, the Cavallon, the 10th anniversary special edition whiskeys from Cavallon. If you guys are big fans of Cavallon, uh, Cavallon, not really sure how you pronounce that. Um, December 4th, 2018 marks a decade to the exact day since the release of the very first whiskey from Cavallon, the uh, classic single malt whiskey. So to celebrate, the brand is debuting two new limited edition whiskeys, the Cavallon Bordeaux Margot and the Cavallon Bordeaux Poulac. Each is a, a bottle at 57.8% uh, ABV and 1,000 milliliter bottles with a gift box. Uh, and you also get two Glencairn uh, glasses in there. Only 3,000 of each were made and the release is currently only available in Taiwan. Global releases are in the works for 2019. Each release carries a suggested retail price of $285. So that was our last story of the night, guys. Um... Actually, I do have one more story. So uh, for you guys that are big fans of uh, Basil Hayden, um, I've already seen this around. I've seen it on the secondary. I've seen it, uh, people shooting pictures with it. It's the uh, Basil Hayden 10-year bourbon. Um, let me see if I can get a picture of it here for you guys. Um, so the Basil Hayden 10-year bourbon uh, just hit shelves uh, this month, which I think was uh, you know kind of cool. I've never been a huge fan of... Um, of the uh, Basil Hayden, but I think uh, so from what I've been hearing so far, a lot of people really like this one. So uh, let me see if I could. Do I have a do I have a picture of it somewhere? Oh, I thought I did. Guess I don't. All right, guys, I'm sorry about that. Um, so a little bit about the Basil Hayden 10 year uh, de debuting this uh, this month. Uh, it's going to be a limited edition product that sees a yearly release around the holiday season. So casting on that holiday season. Gotta love Jim Beam. This bourbon contains the same high rye bourbon recipe from the standard, but carries a 10-year age statement. Um, this is artfully aged on the packaging, and uh, I think the price point on it is about 50 or 60 bucks. So if you guys are big fans of Basil Hayden, go out and look for it. I know it has a black label. It's the same type looking bottle, but a black label on it. So go see if you can find one. Um, all right, guys, let's go to the chat. Let's see what you guys are saying. Uh, pocket change. Uh, oh, hey, we do. Oh, we got Eric Waite in the house. How you doing, man? Nice to see you. Already searching for them. <laughs> uh, George Kaplan's in the house. How you doing, Cap? Nice to see you, man. Uh, Jim Shannon, seventy five dollars for eighty proof. Nah. Oh, Jim, are you talking about the Basil Hayden? Is it seventy five? Is that what you're seeing it for? If it's seventy five, I would not do that for eighty proof. Nah, no thanks. Um, yeah, I like the original, but the label is black. Absolutely. Uh, Basil Hayden, the bottle that has not grown into its label. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I'm going to go back to this 15, guys. So God, that 15 is so good. Now I'm getting uh, a lot more uh, a lot more of that citrus and kind of pan uh, pineapple flavor on it almost. But you know what's killing me on what's what's just amazing for me on this is the uh, the mouthfeel, the mouth coating on it. The flavor is just sticking to my palate. It's like vanilla custard. So good. Really good stuff. Hey, Malton of Montreal here. What's up, Swami? How you doing, man? Nice to see you. Uh, thanks for coming in, man. Uh, let's see. All right, cool. So let's do our first giveaway tonight, guys. So if you guys are just new in the chat, tonight I, uh, I picked up. Uh, two gifts for the viewers uh, tonight since it's getting into the Christmas season. Uh, I am giving away two of these. These are the uh, Red Breast uh, gift packs. 
included is a red breast 12 uh the red breast lustau edition and the red breast 15 uh 15 year age irish whiskeys so i love red breast so much uh, i'm gonna be definitely doing some more irish whiskeys as we get into the new year for uh reviewing um so uh red breast is definitely one of my favorites it's kind of a spoiler but i do love them uh so i'm gonna have two winners to get to give away one of these so I think what I'm going to do is my first uh, my first giveaway tonight. Um, let's see. All right, cool. So this question will be pretty easy. I just wanted to keep it simple tonight. You know, having fun. So uh, so the first person to answer this one in the chat uh, will win the first gift. So basically uh so since i'm nearing 800 subscribers uh if you guys have paid attention to my channel when i first started what was the first thing i ever reviewed so first one to put in the chat and i'm looking for the specific bottle that i reviewed all right i'll wait for you guys in the chat i'm gonna sip on more of the 15 here Mm. Man, that 15 is good. I can't wait to get to the 18. Santa Cruz and said whiskey. Yeah, good good guess, man. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Nicholas Villagio said bourbon. Yeah, he got it. Texas Owl. He got it. Jefferson's Weeded Ocean. You got it, Texas Owl. Texas Owl, drop your... Uh, Drop your email in the uh, the chat, and I will get you out your uh, I'll get you out your gifts. Congrats, Texas Owl. Nice job, Bowie. Nice. Eric, wait. ECBP. You were close, man. That was my second review. <laughs> uh, I got Texas Owl in the chat. He got it. Nice job, man. All right, Texas Owl is winner number one. Uh, so Texas Owl, this one is slated for you. I will get this out to you as soon as I can. Uh, congrats, buddy, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. All right, so what time we got? 9.30, perfect. All right, so I'm going to have a sip of water here. Mm. All right, so now the, uh, the moment I've been waiting for, this is probably the oldest uh, scotch I've tried. This is an 18-year Glen Goyne. This is aged in first refill and sherry casks. Um, same thing, 43% ABV. Uh, Non-chill filtered, no color added, uh, just like a lot of the uh, Scotch enthusiasts like. Really nice color on it. It's definitely slightly darker than the, um, this is the 18, this is the 15. Definitely slightly darker there from that extra, uh, excuse me, that extra three years maturation. Going to just kind of, sp you know, spin it in the glass here. Let it coat the palate. Mm. Coat the palate. Mm. Very good. Good job, Texas Owl. Congrats. Oh, see, I like that. See, Texas Owl, he's never tried red breast. So I'm glad I'm glad you won, buddy. That's cool. Really cool. Oh, thanks, Captain Make It Happen. Appreciate it. He said to hit the like button. Yeah, man, if you guys haven't hit the like button, get in there and hit it. Really appreciate it. All right. So let's check the nose here on the 18-year Glen Goyne. And after we taste this, I'm going to get into my uh, top five uh, my top five scotches uh, that I'm calling out this year. Like I said, I wanted to do with you guys. A lot of you guys in the chat helped me um, pick out some scotches. Definitely Rob, Whiskey in the Six helped me. Um, Jeremy from Super Social Club. Um, Roy, Aquavite, the Scotch Test Dummies. Kind of helped me in what I kind of should kind of go along and try. So I figured this would kind of be a cool one to, to share with you guys. Uh, so I want to do with you here. So let's get into the nose on the 18, guys. Here we go. Wow, this one is way more, um, way more fruit forward on the nose. Whereas the 12, I'm sorry, yeah, the 12 year uh, was more of a vanilla and that really nice burnt toast uh, marmalade flavor. The 15 was like a vanilla custard. Definitely a little bit of a pineapple. And then as we found out on the 12-2, it was turning into a little bit of a coconut there. Uh, this one is way more fruit forward to me. 
A lot of dark fruits on there. Mmm. Almost like a raspberry jam, prunes. Sorry, not prunes, plums. Prunes are gross. Mmm. Wow, I, you know, I'm getting a lot of bourbon, uh, bo uh, bourbon notes on this too. A lot of vanilla, caramel coming through. Some deep, dark brown sugars. You can really kind of taste the balance between the... Um, uh, the sherry and the bourbon casks. And what I'm finding is that my favorite scotches have that mix of uh, bourbon and sherry aging. Mm. All right, guys. I'm going for the 18. Cheers, everybody. Here we go. Wow. Okay, so front of the palate, you're getting a lot of those uh, those fruit flavor notes, like I like I mentioned, maybe like a dark red raspberry, maybe even a cherry or or a uh, or a plum, but it goes away real quick. Now I'm getting all those ex bourbon notes in there, right on the right on the mid palate. This is turning into dark brown sugars and mm, dark brown sugar, caramels, vanillas. That's really nice. But you, wait, let me take another sip before I say anything here. <laughs> hey, Brolic Whiskey's in the house. How you doing, man? Nice to see you. Yeah, Jim Shannon. Definitely plum sounds better than prunes. Mmm. <laughs> wow, now it's finishing with... Uh, well, I'm getting a, I'm getting a really big uh, punch of almonds in there, too. A really nice almond flavor on there. Like a sweet marzipan. Mmm. Wow, that's amazing. The the 10, the 12, and the 18, I'm getting totally different flavor profiles. So good. You could definitely taste that extra age. The 18 definitely has a kind of a deeper, darker flavor profile. But you know what? The 15. I don't know. Let me let me go in for the 18 again one more time here. Mmm. Hey, Whiskey Quest is in the house. How you doing, man? Nice to see you, buddy. Yeah, deep, dark. William Davilar said molasses. I could get on board with that. I mean, it's really um, the brown sugars and the, and, the, and the cook down, like the caramel, the deep, dark toffee flavor. That's really there on the finish. It definitely starts bright. It starts bright with some really nice fruit flavors in there. I think probably from the sherry casks. But, I mean, once it hits mid-palate, you are into all these deep, dark bourbon flavors. That's really good. But you know what? On the 15, the 15 to me, I don't know. I was getting a better uh, kind of a mouth coating and a mouth feel on the 15. And I really like the spice kick that the 15 was giving. The 18 is seems to be a little bit more refined. It's fruity. It's got deep, dark flavors. But that spice kick on the 15, along with that vanilla custardy mouthfeel, is kind of winning me over. I mean, the 18 is delicious, but something about the 15 is just kind of keeping me wanting to go back to that dram. That's really good. Uh, what do we got going here in the... Uh, oh, Jason. Uh, Rob asked about if you set up Patreon yet. Um, no, I, I'm in the uh, process of setting up a Patreon, guys. Uh, actually, Scott from my bourbon journey just tonight, I asked him, hey, can you <laughs> possibly help me set up a Patreon? I haven't done it yet. Um, everything that I've done with this channel and put into it, I've done it kind of on my own. But with the plans that I have for, um, for next year and what I want to do, some traveling, uh, trying to... I think I mentioned this on my channel before. I really want to connect with some uh, master distillers. Uh, my idea is to um, have a series of videos um, kind of mixed in with my reviews as well um, called Off the Still. And what I would like to do is sit down with, uh, with a master distiller, assistant master distiller, whatever it may be, and ask them maybe 10 questions about their experience, learn a little bit more about them, what they do. I don't really want to get into the the branding of whatever whiskey or bourbon company that they work for. I really want to get into the master distiller craft and what they do, what they learned, 
how they, um, what their journey was. And I really think that'd be really amazing for viewers to learn because, you know, I think making whiskey right now with all the, with so many craft distillers coming out there, um, you know, it's really an art form. And I think for the bigger ones, you know, definitely for sure, you know, to trying to stay with these, uh, trying to keep up and stay because, you know, you have your tried and true bourbons that they have in each portfolio. And what they do is, you know, they, they really want to keep that consistent, you know, for their normal buyers. But now you see so many of these other companies. I mean, we just mentioned Buffalo Trace, Harlan Wheatley. Now he's experimenting with Mongolian oak and all these other ones. Uh, Woodford Reserve, they released in uh, a four grain bourbon and oat grain bourbon, different grains, different wood finishings, different types of wood now we're seeing. So I think this is a really good time to kind of get into stuff like that. So I think for me, starting a Patreon might help. I also really want to make some more giveaways and, and contribute to or give back to you guys. I, I had mentioned this before, uh, making more of these, uh, which is my, uh, my flask. Uh, I'm going to partner with the Columbus Barrel Company that's here in, uh, here in town in Columbus, Ohio. This is all made from reused barrel wood. Uh, they imprint my logo on there. I want to be able to kind of buy these and, and share them with you guys. Uh, you know, uh, maybe sell them at a really discounted price, but you know, some funding may help with that. So it's, it's in the works. I just haven't gotten there yet. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Cruising, Supman, Carl, more like 30 after YouTube takes its cut. <laughs> uh, Jared, I totally agree. 15 has a nice spice and better finish. Yeah. I think I would get on board with that, Jared. Yeah. Um, William Davilar is the ratio of the, on the casks different. Um, from what I looked up, uh, the, the only difference was the 18 William. I saw the 12 and the 15 noted as X bourbon and X sherry, but the 18 was the only one that specified that it's first fill bourbon and sherry casks. So that was the only difference I saw. Uh, Nicholas Villaggio, um, most Sean, dark stewed fruits are great, but the vanilla custard will keep you coming. Yeah, that 15, that vanilla custard is just amazing. Whiskey friend, a lot of people get old leather as a tasting note with Glen Goyne. I'm not really getting old leather. I can't, I'm getting a lot of sweetness from there. I mean, if anything, if there's a old leather in there, maybe a little bit on the 18. But the 12 and the 15 were very bright flavors to me. Nothing really old leathery. And that, you know, that could be part of my... Um, you know, kind of my uh, not so not now you know not a lot of experience with with scotches. So if, if that's something, it, it could be. Um, let's see. Need to turn barrel it into a whiskey wall safe. Oh, that's a good idea, Moose. <laughs> uh, Malta de Montreal. I'm not a fan of the 15. The 12 was much better. The 18 is incredible. I've only had a sample to 21. Thanks, Rob. It was nice. Yeah. Um, I'm having a hard time kind of really describing, uh, going, choosing between the 18 and the 15. The 18 to me has a much more balance to it, uh, but the 15 has this mouthfeel to it that is kind of holding on with that vanilla custard. I really like it. And maybe that's for me coming from bourbon, just those flavors I'm used to. Um, Whiskey Ace, we need Scott. <laughs> uh, Texas Owl, a brow wood flask. Oh, I'd buy one when they get on your website. That's cool. Yeah, Texas Owl. I'm definitely thinking about doing one of those. More, more of those, I should say. Um, yeah, the flask is cool. I love the flask. Um, oh, Whiskey Ace, Classic Cut 2018, finally available here. Oh, the Classic Cut is a, definitely a whiskey I want to get into. I know Jeremy from Sipper Social Club, he compared both uh, from the 18 and the 17. I think he said the 18 was better. Jeremy, if you're still in the chat, let me know. Um, so, yeah, really good stuff. You know what? I'm going to let these sit a little bit. Then we're going to go back to the 18 and the 15, which would be cool. Uh, and see if I could kind of, you know, the 12 is delicious, but the 15, the 18, I'm kind of struggling with picking my favorite. So right now, guys, we're going to go into my uh, my top five scotches uh, as chosen by me uh, that I enjoyed this year. Remember, I tried all these for the first time this year. And uh, if you're watching the, the replay on this, guys, anyone that's watching the replay, please keep in mind, I am not experienced with scotches. So if you're looking for a more definitive top five scotch list of maybe something that's, you know, older scotches and, you know, these might be a little bit more entry level for you. 
Um, I mean, if you're looking for more entry-level scotches, then this might be a good uh, lead-up for you guys. But, you know, if, if you're really looking for some scotch, uh, uh, scotch advice on the best ones from 2018, I would defer to Rob I would, uh, from Whiskey in the Six. Uh, scotch for dummies, scotch test dummies, um, you know, those guys like that that have way more experience than I do. I just thought it would be fun because, like I said, you guys kind of helped me pick these. So let's go to um, my number. So, like I said, the top five. Here's my number five scotch that I enjoyed, and it is, number five is the Old Putney 12. Um, as you see, this bottle is down here. And I, com I, I hammered the first bottle. Gone. Loved it. This bottle here, um, I think for me coming off of bourbon, was absolutely incredible. It was such great flavor in this. It was the salted caramel um, flavor on it that got me. The vanillas, the caramels that were in this, that burnt toast flavor, a little bit of that lemon zest. But when you add that sea salt air to this, that salted note with the caramel... This won me over, hardcore. Like I said, this is my second bottle. This recently went up in price here in Ohio. This was originally 26 bucks, and it doubled in price. Now it's almost 50 And, um, you know, maybe with good reason. It's absolutely delicious. I love Old Putney 12. Uh, Steve A said, 2018 Classic Cut is better than the 2017 to me. Nice. Uh, Moose 76, no. Not White Walker. <laughs> um... Let's see, Santa Cruz, and it's still 29 bucks. Oh, good. Uh, Matt Malton, Swami, I prefer Old Putney to over Old Putney. <laughs> oh, I think it's I called it Old Putney one time. And I've heard it mentioned like that, so I don't know what the real one is. So, all right, let's move on to my number four for the year here, guys. Uh, number four, this bottle got me right away. It had such a unique flavor profile. I loved it. I kept sipping on it. This is also into my second bottle, and it is Compass Box Spice Tree. Uh, this scotch, this blended scotch was absolutely delicious. The flavors in this thing were absolutely unreal. The, the I mean, I hate to say something you know obvious, the spiciness to it. There was a complete crazy spiciness to it. It was almost like uh, the baking spices that were found in here were amazing. And it just got better and better as, the, as it got down the bottle. I absolutely loved it. Um, this is my, uh, my second bottle. Um, it has such intense flavor to it. And as it got down, the flavor just got better. Amazing, amazing whiskey. My favorite. I actually enjoyed this more than the Compass Spice Tree Extravaganza. The Extravaganza was great. But I think the older age whiskeys that are mixed in there um, gave it kind of a, I don't know, there, there, was, there was a flavor in there I just didn't enjoy as much as this one. This one was just cleaner flavors, brighter flavors, dark fruits, dark baking spices. It was unbelievable. I love this whiskey. Like I said, it's my second bottle. Number four, Compass Box Spice Tree. Let's see. Uh, who we got? Uh, that's a great price, Santa Cruz. In. Good choice, Jason. Cool, yeah. Um, lovely stuff. Gateway to Scott. Yeah, it's to it's a total gateway. I would agree. Uh, this uh, bottle is the – this is the 2017 bottling. Uh, so this is from last year. I had this. Uh, I was waiting to open it. And when I started my Scotch journey – and this one, this one got me, man. I loved it. All right, so that's number four. So let's go to number three. Um, where was my number three? Oh, let me put that right here. I don't want to get confused. So number three, my number three scotch of 2018 that I really enjoyed, that I sipped on. Again, again, I am on my second bottle of this. It is Deanston 12. So Deanston 12, this had such an amazing honey, heathery, light flavor to it. That was that intensified as the bottle went down. I absolutely loved it. It was so good. Um, the honey notes and the creaminess of this and the um, I remember I remember um, Roy from Aquavite talking to me about this. How Deanston is known for almost a waxy type of feel to it, and I totally I totally felt that with this. The almost like a honey candle, like you're sipping on the way it just sticks and the way it kind of 
you know, goes down the palate. Absolutely unbelievable scotch. I absolutely love this stuff. It took me a while to find one. Um, then I went back and I found another. <laughs> I bought it again. It was crazy. So the regular retail price on this was about, uh, I think, 50 or 60 bucks, which is I think is about normal. Uh, I saw this at a place uh, listed for $150, and it was double the price of the Deanston 18, which I thought was just crazy. Um, so definitely word about this bottle is getting around. If you're a bourbon drinker, um, I would highly recommend trying Decent 12 if you want to make your way into the scotch world. Really great stuff. Um, let's see here. Roy is in love with it. Yeah, we yeah, William. Roy is definitely in love with Decent 12. It's, uh, it's, it's malty. It's sweet. The honey, uh, the honey flavor on it. It's got like this, uh, this heathery, grainy um, uh, flavor profile to it that is just unbelievable. I absolutely loved it. So three is decent 12, guys. Um, uh, Jared Oz only tried the virgin oak. Jared, I have a bottle of the virgin oak. Just haven't cracked it open yet. But that 12 was great. All right, guys. So this one might surprise you. I had a hard time going back and forth for number two. So number two for me is... Da -da -da, Ardbeg 10. Yeah, that's right, Pete Heads. Ardbeg 10 for me was... I'm not going to lie. When I first tried it, uh, I think if you saw my review, I did. I got Pete smacked. I didn't know what the hell I was drinking. But I did have the Lagavulin 8 before that, which is another bottle I love. So between the Lagavulin 8 and the Ardbeg 10, I had a really hard time picking my uh, my second choice. I could have really – it's basically 2A uh, and 2B for me with Lagavulin 8 and Ardbeg 10. But Ardbeg 10 – as I drank it down, again, second bottle, <laughs> Ardbeg 10, when I drank it down the first time, um, the sweet flavors that came out of it after after that that initial peat, uh, peat burst to me was absolutely incredible. When I did it, I told you, I said it had a candied bacon flavor that would not leave my palate, and I kept going back to it, that smoky barbecue baking flair that I was getting on the palate was absolutely unreal. I absolutely loved it, and I cannot wait to try more Ardbeg um, in 2019. So, really great stuff. Steve A, all hail Ardbeg. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, I could I could be a cult member, so it was awesome. Um, let's see. Most Chun, love the Pete and Ardbeg 10. Absolutely. Cult of Ardbeg represent. <laughs> I have the need, the need for Pete. Yep. Comment section blowing up. Yeah, yeah. We've got 42 watching now. This is awesome, guys. Um, Lafroy versus Ard Ardbeg all over again. So that's a good point, William. Um, the Ardbeg, I preferred way more over the Lafroy for me. Um, maybe there's some more Lafroy expressions I could get into down the line. But the, uh, the Lafroy to me had more of a cigarette ash flavor to it. And I just don't think my palate was ready for that yet. Um, I kept drinking it down a little bit to see if it got sweeter, which it did. But the that cigarette ashy note that was on it, I just I, it just wasn't jiving with me. I, I enjoyed it; it was great. Um, but the Ardbeg Ten, that sweet bacon flavor that I got on it after drinking it down was absolutely unbelievable, uh, which got me into trying some more peated stuff. Um, and before I reveal my number one. Uh, there are two distilleries that I've uh, – well, one more distillery that I'm completely super excited about trying more of, and that's the uh, the Brook Lottie. Um, I got a tasting pack uh, from the Classic Lottie, the uh, Port Charlotte, and the Isla Barley, and I love all of them. Um, George Kaplan, if he's still in the chat, he was really kind enough to send me some samples of some Octomores, which I thought were just unbelievable, the, the flavor profiles in those. The way it evolves, you know, how it, it's just so deep and dark and flavorful. I cannot wait to get into more of those. That's that's one of the uh, my my uh, my distilleries that I'm super excited to try more of in the 2018. So uh, 2019, I should say. Uh, where are we going here? Um, let's see. Jason, you made me pour a dram of my Glen Goring 21. Oh, sorry, Tom, Tom R. That's probably a hard thing, right? Glen Goring 21. That stuff must taste unbelievable. 
Texas Al is number one at Lagavulin. No, it's not a Lagavulin. Lagavulin would have... I was going back and forth between the Lagavulin 8 and the Ardbeg 10 for my number two. Uh, Lagavulin 8 to me had a barbecued peach flavor uh, once I got past the peach. Uh, once I got past the peat. And that was absolutely unbelievable. But, you know, I'm a huge bacon fan. So Ardbeg just won on bacon flavor alone. <laughs> so that's why I chose it as my number two. Um, Whiskey Quest is joining me having some uh, some Lagavulin. George Kaplan, I love the Octomores. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, whiskey in the Six, funny, I was telling Jason that I was going to do a whiskey rundown of the entire Glen Goyne. Yeah, we had talked about that, the entire Glen Goyne lineup. I'm just doing 12 to 18, uh, Rob, so I know you probably have 21, maybe the 25, which I know sound incredible. We'll love to try those one day. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for that. Glenn, uh, Rob's going to do the whole rundown for uh, Glen Goyne. Um, Mont- Malton of Montreal, you need to try some Springback. Yeah. So that's another distillery I'm excited to try, some Springbank. Um, that's not available here in Ohio, so whenever I go out to another state, I'm going to definitely be on the lookout uh, for that Swami, absolutely. Uh, all right, guys, so let's get into my number one. Uh, my number one scotch of the year that I tried that I could not stop going back to uh, right away. I haven't gotten into my second bottle of it yet, only because I can't get it here. Uh, it's a little bit hard to find here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, but the next time I leave the state, I am going to grab more, and I want to try older versions of this. And that would be the Bunahaben 12-year scotch. I absolutely fell in love with this bottle from sip one to sip, well, I don't know what I'm at now, maybe sip 25, sip 30. Absolutely delicious. The flavors in this, the the um, those deep, dark uh, almost like a, uh, and I think in, in the review, what I said, you know why I love this so much? It took me back to my childhood with my grandmother cooking some uh, Italian, uh, this Italian cookie or Italian candy, I should say. It's the sesame seed candy where she would cook down grapes to the point where they were syrupy. And then you would, then you basically mix it with nuts and uh, pistachios and different types of and uh, sesame seeds. And then you kind of pour that out and let it harden. But the flavors that came through the house, this took me back to that. And it's amazing when a, when a whiskey can do that. And between that and the bourbon notes I was getting on here from the uh, the finishing, I just absolutely loved it. Um, I'm finding that, you know, the series with Bunahab and Deanston, um, you know all these all these uh, scotches that are non-chill filtered that are have no added color. It's absolutely they're absolutely delicious. But this one really really got me, and I cannot wait to try the 18, which I'm on the lookout for, uh, and some other some other series. So I cannot wait. Um, let's see what we got, guys, in the chat. Let's see. Uh, Rob has everything. <laughs> Texas Owl. Oh, let's see. Uh, Moose 76, I can live off your top five and be happy for many years. Oh, I'm glad you feel that way. Um, I really, uh, I was really struggling with some other ones. I I tried some other good scotches, but I really wanted to focus on the ones that I was able to review, uh, the ones that I really spent time with, because I really feel like that's the only way you can really do a scotch justice, even a bourbon. You spend some time with it, and, you know, it's kind of like a relationship, you know? The first couple drams, first couple sips are usually pretty good. Uh, but it's the it's those lasting ones that come way later, and if it's still good at that point, you got something. So, uh, whiskey the six, uh, well done, brother. Great choices. Oh, thanks, Rob. That means that that uh, that means a lot coming from you, man. Uh, Most Chan, great picks for a Scotch or bourbon drinker. Yeah, um, this Boone Hoppin twelve. I told you, it just it really got me. Uh, so this is um, as I said, it's it's unchill filtered. The toasted, uh, the toasted nuttiness on this, I think, was something that I hadn't really gotten in a scotch yet. I was getting a lot of vanilla notes. I was getting those caramels, that burnt toast flavor, the citrus notes. Obviously, the peated stuff was giving me that bacon and stuff. But the Bunahaben, the mix of that deep, dark fruitiness mixed with the toasted nut flavor just blew me away. So I cannot wait to try more of that stuff. So that's the other distillery I'm super excited to try more of in 2019 uh, coming up. So... Really, really excited for that, guys. Uh, solid top five, yep. 
Um, yeah, so I so 2019, I'm, I'm definitely looking at buying some older expressions of these, trying some uh, some more stuff, uh, you know. And that's a big reason why I wanted to do this Glenn Going uh, fight here tonight to see which one I like better because an 18 year, it's something that I haven't tried yet. So, um, all right, so let's go back to the 15 and the 18. Uh, and then before we call a night, we'll do our last giveaway, guys. So let me see if I can pick my uh, favorites here between the 15 and the 18. Yeah, the 15 is uh yeah, the 15 is vanilla custard, pineapple citrus all the way still even more so that it's been sitting. The 18 has a faint now the fruitiness that I got when I first poured it has kind of dissipated a little bit. Now it's turning into all uh almond nuttiness and and um uh vanillas and dark brown sugars. Just amazing. All right, let's go to the 15 here real quick. <laughs> oh man that oh that vanilla custard and that spice kick on it i love it it's this maybe it's the bourbon drinker in me why i love that spice kick on the end i don't know what it is but it's really really having me go back to that 15 i'm gonna take a quick sip of water hey terry's in the house hi terry uh, Terry is my uh, my friend from New York. How you doing? Everybody say hi to Terry. <laughs> uh, oh, thanks a lot, Malton Montreal. Appreciate you coming in, Swami. All right, going into the uh, to the eighteen now. Mm. Wow! Now the eighteen, I'm getting a little bit of that apple note that I got on the on the twelve. Definitely more bourbon influence in there. Mm. A little bit of that fruitiness uh, on the front of the palate, but really on the end, you're getting um, getting those really nice bourbon notes. They're definitely deeper and darker. The nice deep dark brown sugars. It, it's funny. I'm trying to. I feel like the the front of the palate on the 18 I like better than the 15, but the finish on the 15 I like better than the 18. If that makes any sense. So, I think if I had to choose one, I think the 15, just for the mouthfeel and the spice kick alone, I would actually probably take over the 18. Um, just right now, right here, right now. Just for, just for my palate. You know, if you guys like the 18 rather than the 15, that's awesome. But for me, for my palate, I really think I'm enjoying the 15 more. It's really because of that, that creaminess that it, uh, that it brings to the palate. And that spice kick on the end is absolutely freaking delicious. I love it. It's so good. All right, guys. Um, so the 15 it is for me, for Glenn Goyne. And uh, let it, let us uh, get into the second giveaway for the uh, second gift of the Red Breast. Texas Owl won the first one. So for the second one, uh, since we just went through my top five scotches that I picked for uh, 2018, uh, who in the chat can name... Um, what was the first scotch that I reviewed on my channel? What was the first scotch? In Texas Owl, you're out because you already won one. So. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm waiting in the uh, the chat here. Let's see who could call it out. What was the first scotch that I tried? That I actually can't even go back to now because it's just so like bland to me compared to some of these others. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, Numenium. Numenium got it. Monkey Shoulder. Yep. Monkey Shoulder was the first scotch that I tried. Uh, it was good. It was, it's a really good intro to scotch. But I would actually intro Old Putney or, um, uh, or even Compass Box Spice Tree as an intro to scotch for, for a bourbon drinker. Just so much better flavors in there. So, yeah. Numenium. Good job, guys. Uh, let's see, Numenium, you got it, buddy. So Numenium, uh, I'll be, and so Numenium, Texas Owl, congrats. You guys will be receiving these from me. I'm going to wrap them and everything. You guys are going to get a nice little gift in the mail. So uh, I really appreciate you, you watching. Um, uh, one other quick announcement, guys, before I sign off. Uh, I am heading to uh, Woodford Reserve tomorrow. I got a really nice invite uh, from one of the viewers um, who let me... 
invited me to go sit down and have lunch with uh, with the assistant master distiller over at uh, Woodford Reserve, who is Elizabeth McCall. So I cannot tell you guys how excited I am to sit down and possibly maybe do an interview with her. I'm going to try. I'm bringing my camera. If, uh, if I do, um, I'll have a really nice setup and I'll try to release a video of the interview with her. Um, she is the one of the uh, not only one of the youngest master distillers. She's the one of the youngest assistant master distiller females in Kentucky or ever. So I'm really excited to kind of sit down and talk with her and uh, see you know if she's able to do an interview. If not, I'll, I'll just answer some questions and maybe get some highlights and report back to you guys on my next live stream. My next live stream I'm going to be live streaming from New York, New York. Going to be uh, back in New York uh, next week. Wednesday night will be the same time. I'm only going to be at my mother's house uh, in New York. Uh, maybe she'll come on. She's become quite the bourbon drinker herself. So um, really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much. Um, like I mentioned, trying to get to that 1,000 subscribers. Really want to do a blind flight with one of you viewers. Really appreciate you coming on. Um, so uh, with that, I'm going to take my Glen Going 15. Uh, I'm going to... Raise my glass to you guys. Thanks so much for coming by. I always have a ton of fun with these live streams, as you know. Uh, and as I always say, it is not about the whiskey. It is the people you share it with. Cheers, guys. And I will see you next week from New York. Take care, everybody. Miss you.